Now we can move on to the final type of manual annotation, and that is individual identification. So individual ID within TrapTagger um, is split into um, two stages. Uh, so I'm going to split it into probably four videos. Uh, it's going to be this video, which is going to be an overall introduction to, as to what it is, why we're trying to do it, and why we do it the way we, uh, why, why we approach it the way we do. Um, and then we have one video each for each of the annotation stages, um, and then a video dedicated to the sort of looking at, at the results thereafter. So looking at your library of individuals, um, what information you can see, and then sort of um, how you can then uh, combine um, individuals across multiple data sets, multiple surveys. Okay, so the first question is then obviously is what, indivi what is individual ID? So the idea is, it's also called re-ID, and the idea is we're trying to identify um, known individuals within our population of a particular species in our surveyed area. And so the main reason why typically people want to do this is to perform spatial capture recapture. So for those of you that don't know, it's essentially a technique, a statistical technique that uses um, where you identify an individual at a particular site and then recapture that same individual either at the same type of site or at other sites to use that information to much more statistically, um, robustly calculate a population estimate uh, for the, a particular species in your, your um, survey area. So that's, that's the primary reason why you want to do that, and that actually is completely built into our analysis tools in TrapTagger. So you can actually run that sort of analysis directly within the platform without even downloading any of your data. Um, so check that out if, if you're interested in that. Um, but obviously there's a lot of other ancillary benefits um, to finding out this information, um, and that's stuff like being able to just keep a library of known individuals and be able to see where they've been seen, sort of where their territories are, what other individuals they've interacted with, and other information like um, when they were first seen or last seen and stuff like that. Um, so that's also part of why one would want to perform this function. Um, so what's worth pointing out um, with this whole process of individual ID is that the AI algorithms that are out there um, cannot be reliant to perform this job automatically. And the problem is that basically due to the sheer number of combinations between all the various images you've got, any number of false positives immediately results in um, individuals being combined, which, um, you know, that two different individuals being combined, and what I mean, um, which then obviously just snowballs and snowballs into just rubbish out. And so, at this stage, the only way to really use um, AIs um, in this context is as a tool to assist the, mat, the process of manual annotation and to primarily reduce um, the amount of work you need to do. So basically, the, the, the problem with all this as well is that our greatest enemy always is that sheer number of combinations. So as the number of Im images um, for your particular species of interest grows, um, the number of potential combinations between them that could be a match grows exponentially. So if you just have a thousand images of hyena or leopards that you want to perform individual ID on, um, that's theoretically up to a million possible combinations you would have to look at. Um, in practice, it's less. Um, and through the techniques we use, it is less, significantly less, but that's, that's theoretically the possible number of combinations you need to look at. Um, so basically that's what we're trying to combat from the start. So everything we do is to try and reduce that number of combinations. Um, and primarily that's by using an AI to generate some sort of similarity score. Um, it's a measure of how similar pairs of images are. Um, so that when you're busy annotating, you can start at the most similar um, pairs and then work your way down in essence. Um, so that you're able to combine all the easy combinations um, before getting into sort of the weeds and where it's challenging um, and be able to really, uh, yeah, just simply reduce the number of combinations. So the way we go about it um, is, as I said, is in two stages. So the first stage, what we do is we look at um, on a per cluster basis. So we've always spoken about clusters within TrapTagger 
These are images at the same site um, that have been triggered by the same event. Um, specifically, in the case of individual ID, we hopefully have multiple cameras per site, specifically a camera on either side of the game trail, um, so that we can get both flanks of an individual as it passes through. So we've now got a cluster from multiple cameras. We want to actually be able to use that information and contextually look at a cluster and be able to combine multiple view angles and hopefully multiple flanks of each individual um, to then basically before we then run them through various algorithms um, to basically just allow them to be better matched um, and improve the suggestion process thereafter. While we're doing this, we also have used AI to automatically detect what flanks um, have been, are, being, are seen in each image. Um, and you need to correct that as well. So the idea is we only want to compare left flanks against left flanks and right against right. Otherwise, you end up with false positives if you match across everything. So um, as part of this process as well, you need to just double check that all the flanks have been detected correctly um, so that when everything then is run through the, um, the, the various algorithms, everything is ready for that. Um, then the second stage is basically now if you're wanting to compare um, between, you've now got created these little batches of images um, with whole, hopefully multiple view angles of each individual. And now what you want to be able to do is combine them. So you get allocated an individual, and then now we've got a similarity score between each of these little packets of images. So we can say, okay, here are the suggested matches from most similar to least similar. And then you can just combine or reject those uh, matches as you go along until you've um, looked, uh, looked, looked at a sufficient percentage of the data set that you're confident that you're no longer getting accurate matches or run all the way to an exhaustive search and look at everything um, if you have um, the time and resources to do so. And yeah, now we can move into the actual workflows themselves.